<laughs> right in the corner. And that's Safin's best shot, without a doubt, in my book, from the back of the court. The ability to be able to change direction on the ball, take it early inside the baseline, very difficult to defend against. Yeah, that's good. And be careful with that serve that's sliced wide. The man is fast. Well and he does have excellent hands. It was a short swing on the return, just managing to clip the line. Explosive than in a three set match. Well, that was explosive. He doesn't generate a huge amount of pace, but his control is absolutely superb. So, here, Safin will have been expecting a defensive shot, possibly cross court, playing the percentages in terms of going over the low part of the net into the deep part of the court. But Nalbandian figured that he could still take Safin by surprise. That's simply too good. So a wonderful performance from the big Russian. Oh, no, that's better. That's the favourite shot areas that you feel you can hurt the opposition in the backhand down the line is certainly one of those for Nalbandian. That was pretty good length from Safin, but it was a slide shot, not a topspin shot, so therefore Nalbandian didn't have to move back behind the baseline. Oh, well, now Marit won't like that. But he's being very philosophical. When I'm sure, I call. If I'm not sure, I don't call. Well, look, Romano, look, I'm afraid uh, TMI doesn't agree with you this time. It wasn't even enough. Well, well, now, thank goodness he's getting some. It's an excellent tactic to use against Safin. Six foot four, 200 pounds, finds it very, very difficult to change direction once he's moving. Amazing ability just to pick winners at will. He started timing that backhand. He'd made 11 of his 16 unforced errors off that side, and it's. You hit the ball up the middle of the court against Safin at your peril. Russian had plenty of time there to get set up. He kept good length initially. Nalbandian dropping the ball ever so slightly short and Safin changing direction quite beautifully with subtle use of the wrist to get the necessary topspin.
I think he's made it this time. Well, he had to really scramble to stay in the point as long as he did. Excellent length from Safin. But he then just got stuck in no man's land rather than following the ball into the net or retreating to the baseline. He stood his ground and therefore Nalbandian had an opportunity just to squeeze the ball down the line. That's it. So they shake hands, mutual congratulations for Safin's fourth Masters Series success. The first here in Madrid, and no question about the outcome today, he was always the better player. An hour and 52 minutes at stake now for that straight sets win. 6-2, 6-4, 6-3, and I think the 9,500 here would have liked a closer match, but they got a great exhibition of power play from a man who specializes in that department and who we need frankly to be at his best for the health of the world game and this is how the match ended this heavy serve of safins which all afternoon long had really been too much for nalbandian once again forced the error and brought him a well-deserved victory relief on his face as he thanks the crowd I think now Safin is back to something like his best, the sort of tennis he produced at the start of the year when in Australia he got to the final with those sterling victories over Roddick in the quarters, Agassi in the semis, and then lost a good close four-set match against Federer. I think they told us just how good a player he can be. And uh, the game needs Safin to be at his best. Certainly does. He, he really gives a, a whole new dimension to the game because he can play so aggressively on any surface. I believe he's one of the players that can win the Grand Slam. Whether he has the mental fortitude to do that remains to be seen, but he can play well on rebound ace in Australia, on the clay at Roland Garros. Not sure whether he can do that well on the grass, but he certainly has the game to be able to do that well. And then, of course, on hard courts at the US Open. So. I think he can be successful and has been in the past in all of the Grand Slam events and it would be s superb if we could start to develop a rivalry between him and Roger Federer. It certainly hasn't been the case between Federer and Andy Roddick. Federer really uh, has been beating Roddick way too easily in most of their encounters for it to become a rivalry. But I think if Safin can play somewhere near his best, he certainly has the ability to be able to beat Federer and that would be a nice rivalry.